Hi, everyone. Greetings. We're in the last chapter of Genesis, chapter 50. We're starting at verse 14, reading down to verse 21. Okay. This is after the, the huge funeral procession into Canaan to bury Jacob. Mm -hmm. And now something happens, which is a bit unexpected, I think, but, mm. but it's, it's so revealing. And after he had buried his father, Joseph returned to Egypt, he and his brothers and all who went up with him to bury his father. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, Perhaps Joseph will hate us and may actually repay us for all the evil which we did to him. So they sent messengers to Joseph, saying, Before your father died, he commanded, saying, Thus you shall say to Joseph, I beg you, please forgive the trespass of your brothers and their sin, for they did evil to you. Now please forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also went and fell down before his face, and they said, Behold, we are your servants. Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid, for I am for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, in order to bring it about as it is this day, to save many people alive. Now, therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Mm -hmm. Why is this a surprise? Because you, you can't believe that here we are now 17 years after they all come down, after Joseph has already enabled all mm -hmm. the families, if it, the brothers who betrayed him and mm -hmm. thought they were permanently rid of him, He's permitted them all to come to Egypt, bless them all, and here that we are after Jacob dies, and he thinks somehow he thinks that Jacob's being alive is what's preventing Joseph from doing the worst. Yeah, yeah, it is sad, uh, you know that that he's not given the benefit of. They just don't believe that somebody would forgive such a sin. Now, what does that say about you yeah. if you if you're like that? That's right. You, you should give people the benefit of the doubt that, that they mean what they say. What evidence has there been that Joseph is going to turn around once Jacob is dead? Yeah. But, but the guilt that they obviously felt before Joseph mm -hmm. revealed himself to them, yeah. they're it's still, still living it's with still them. there. Yeah, and, and guilt does that. You, even if you're forgiven, you're still going to remember and regret, and, and you can nurse that guilt. Yeah. So that's what they're doing. They're living in fear when they don't really have to. But he's so disappointed. I mean, he weeps. We, I think yeah. it's about six times altogether it's recorded that Joseph wept in the book of Genesis. Compare that to mm -hmm. only twice that it's recorded in the Gospels that Christ wept. Yeah. And you might want to think about when those were. But Joseph is very emotional, obviously, and he's, yeah. he wept uh, when he revealed himself or even before that, when his brother Judah confessed yeah. that this would kill their father if 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 when he sees if his... he doesn't see Benjamin again, etc. Yeah, yeah. When he sees Benjamin, he weeps. When he sees his father again, he weeps. So, so he is emotional about the whole thing, and and it says that he comforts them and speaks kindly to them. This is the way he's always been to them, and yeah. his he tells them his philosophy is that God God is in charge. So you might have meant bad, but he's worked it all out yep. for the blessing of everyone in the end. Yeah, yeah. Even this little remark in verse 21 when he says, I will provide for you and your little ones. Mm -hmm. It's like Joseph has the, the, the God view of, of, yeah. the, of the human situation, namely that this is not just about a relationship between my father and you and me. Mm -hmm. This is about our offspring. This is all about God's providence yeah. over th this d this patriarchal period, creating the great nation that he prophesied through Abraham he would create. Mm -hmm. If you don't take the large view and pull yourself back from your feelings and, and yeah. your relationships within your 
the present generation, mm-hmm. you don't see the world or you don't see history the way Joseph does. This is really yeah. a philosophy of history. He and has. you don't see God in the picture either. So a, a lot of people who leave the witnesses, they feel such uh, sadness and frustration, and then they turn it on God, and they kind of blame him for for having been a witness for so long and wasting time. You know, we hear those kinds of expressions from people. Sure do. But if you're out, who do you credit with that? The information was always there. Who gets the blame? God gets the blame for the fact that you were ignorant and and, and you wouldn't and look at the, wouldn't fa- look the facts. At the evidence. Yeah. yeah. But then when you do look at the evidence, who gets the credit for that? I give the credit to God. I mean, I wasn't seeking to leave the witnesses. I I was quite content as a witness. And yet and now when I look back over my whole life, even as a witness, I see there were things that should have tipped me off that I should be looking, investigating. But I didn't do it. For, For many years. times I had to be mm-hmm. poked so many times before I looked at the evidence. Well... I, you know, that's God. <laughs> I it, think that's and it's, God. And, that, it's, and it's on yeah. you that you didn't look. That's right. So God keeps drawing. We can't blame him. Uh, there's two evidences right here in these few verses, though, of God's providential control of things. One is what you just said, verse 20, which deserves rereading. As, as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as mm. they are today. It's all yeah. about the... The end, not about the middle or the beginning, mm-hmm. which was very bad. Yeah. But but then there's verse 18. His brothers also came and fell down before him and said, Behold, we are your servants. Yeah. We might just gloss right over that, yeah. forgetting that this is the fulfillment of a dream that, that Joseph had when he was 17, almost mm-hmm. 40 years before yeah. this. It's That's being right. fulfilled right here that one day even his own brothers would fall down before him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So in that you see the hand of God that he's he knows the future. You can't see it. Joseph couldn't see it until mm-hmm. somewhere in the middle. We don't know when he figured all this out, but he's got it now. But they haven't got it very clearly. They don't see the the providential hand even in the character of Joseph, their brother, who has had mm. there's no reason they should doubt him. Yeah. In the way he's behaved toward them. Yeah. They're expecting him to behave the way they would probably behave. Yeah, that's that's the key. The, yeah. They think, well, we would do this. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't be so nice. We wouldn't be so forgiving. Yeah. So tell us more about you than others if you doubt people when they say they love you and well, they forgive you. There's two good quotes here, one from James Strawn, right, and mm-hmm. another from McLaren. So I'll read the Strawn one. Have they really been regarding their father as the only bulwark between themselves and a brother's wrath? Must they persist in thinking of him as a judge and a foe? Yet their suspicions only serve to display the generous sympathy of his nature. As he realized what they had been suffering, he cannot keep back his tears. He wept when they spake unto him. These are not hot tears of wounded vanity or fretful impatience. They are tears of compassion, overflowing from a heart full of love. We read of many occasions on which Joseph weeps when he hears his brother's first confession, when he meets his young brother after a long separation, when he makes himself known to his brethren when he embraces his father again after many years, when he sees his father still in death, and now when his brothers doubt his love. It is never the thought of himself, but always the thought of others that moves him. Yeah. This good. is why Joseph is such a perfect type, maybe the best type in all the Old Testament for Christ. Yeah. His attitude, the way he reveals the heart of God towards human beings, God is not resentful. God always wants to forgive. Mm-hmm. But we, in our hard, hardness of heart, don't understand that. And we think that everything that happens to us, everything that happens for bad, is somehow a sign of his displeasure. Mm-hmm. Instead of thinking, no, it's part of his providential design or plan or the, 
the, mm -hmm. the very fact that community generates all kinds of uh, repercussions that don't have anything directly to do with your personal sin. Mm -hmm. The issue that Job, Job and his friends are debating back and forth all the time. So, so it, Joseph is a, yeah. a, a wonderful picture of Christ in his relationship to Israel, too. Yeah, so grace is displayed here. Uh, and in, in the Watchtower, we don't use the word grace. We use undeserved kindness. But then we expect that you need to deserve it. And it makes no sense. But I know as a witness, that's what we believe. We say God's undeserved kindness, but then you have to do right. You have to be faithful. How well, faithful? The, the undeserved kindness, as, as we understood it, was that God's willing to give you a second chance. Yeah. That's that's the extent of it. He's willing to give you a second chance, whether it's now or mm -hmm. during the millennium when he brings back billions of people. So, no, the forgiveness is not is not the grace. It, yeah. Forgiveness is the chance for you to prove yourself. So humans, I think as humans, we have a hard time with being forgiven and grace. Those like undeserved yeah. grace. We just have a hard time accepting it. McLaren says their fear that Jacob's death would be followed by an outbreak of long smothered revenge betrayed but too clearly their own base natures. Mm -hmm. They thought him like themselves, and they knew themselves capable of nursing wrath to keep it warm through long years of apparent kindliness. They had no room in their hearts for frank full forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So they had lived on through numberless signs of their brother's love and care and still kept the old dread, and probably not a little of the old envy. Yeah. Hmm. How much happiness they had lost by their slowness to believe in Joseph's love. Is yeah. there nothing like this in our, thoughts, in our thoughts of God? Do men not live for years on his bounty, and all the while cherish suspicions of his heart? Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such and one as thyself. It is hard to believe in a love which has no faintest trace of desire for vengeance for all past slights. It's hard for hearts conscious of their own slowness to pardon, to realize undoubtedly God's infinite placability. That's a nice word. Mm -hmm. What's our links? We're linking to a video that I did from a series, uh, Jerry Bergman, who who was uh, a doctor and he's analyzing all the problems that we face when we leave the witnesses and so it's called uh, religion doesn't create guilt JW's guilt intensified by graceless uh, graceless unforgiving org policies mm -hmm. and uh, we'll We'll start the. We'll put in the Genesis playlist. You can watch it all over again. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's quite a few of our viewers who have never, don't even realize there is such a playlist. Yeah. It's now about yeah. 145 videos. We're nearing the end, though. Yeah. It's very profitable, though. Yeah. <laughs> See you next time.